What is good, everybody? It's your boy, MPB. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the WMU Football Dynasty on College Football Revamped. As you can tell from the title, today is our first gameplay episode, our first game of the season, and of the entire series against University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan, in the big house. I am beyond stoked to finally get to be able to bring you all some gameplay. Thank you for bearing with me for an intro video and a long preseason video. But now, the foundation is set and we can really jump headfirst into this dynasty. Expect these gameplay videos to be way more frequent. And what a better way to start this series than to take on one of the most storied programs in all of college football and the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Michigan is going to be heavily favored in this one, but you know the Broncos are going to at least attempt to show up. And we will just have to wait and see if that translates to an upset victory or if there's going to be a reality check right off the bat about how difficult of a rebuild this is going to be. Not shockingly, Lee Corso and I'm assuming the rest of the College Game Day panel has picked the Wolverines in this one. As you can see, we are outmatched with an A to B minus rating, an A minus to B minus offensive rating, and an A plus to B minus defense. But the Broncos have one thing that the Wolverines do not, and that is an upset on their minds. Even if we just take a look real quick at the program info of these two squads, it is remarkable how far behind the Broncos of Kalamazoo are. We are looking at an all-time record for the University of Michigan at 964 wins compared to 350 losses and 36 ties. Let's go look at what the Broncos have. 580 wins, 461 losses, and 24 ties. That's right, we've got 100 more losses than them with 400 less wins, roughly. The bowl records are also not too hot of a comparison. Western is checking in at a 1-9 all-time bowl record, whereas Michigan has 21 bowl victories. They literally have 20 more seasons in which they've won a bowl game than us. Not to mention the conference championships and national championships sitting at 42 and 11 respectively for Michigan. Whereas the Broncos sit at 3 and 0. This is going to be fun. Without further ado, let's get into this game. This is our all white away combo. It's pretty clean. And then our main home option is the all brown unis with the white helmet. Unfortunately, the white helmet is the only one that we have available. The only other unique combination we'll have at any point will be brown with white pants or white with brown pants. We can make it a look. We will be wearing our all white Adidas uniforms. Look at this overall differential. 95 to 81, 93 to 81, 97 to 82. Buckle in everybody. And just like that, we're fired up and ready to go. I'll see you all in game. Let's pull off a stunner in the big house. Yo, Appalachian State, you got a second? What is good, everybody? Welcome back in. It is game time. It's time for the coin toss. And you know what? Tails never fails. Let's start it off on the right foot. Tails never fails indeed. I'm definitely a kick first guy, especially in games like this in which every possession matters. If we're behind going into halftime, I want to get the ball at half and I want to set the tone for the rest of the game. For anybody that's interested in some pregame scouting like I know I am, you can go ahead and watch me go through this Wolverine roster just real quick. If you're not interested, go ahead, just skip to the gameplay. I'll see you in a second. So in real life, the Wolverines utilize a two-quarterback system for most of the season with Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. I'm not exactly sure how the University of Michigan auto subs are working in this, so I don't think we're going to see McCarthy with as much frequency as we would in real life, but there might be a look or two in which McCarthy gets subbed in. McNamara's got decent speed, 76. He's definitely not going to beat you with his legs, but he can make plays. 
the 82 awareness is really nice for a sophomore. As a 92 overall as a sophomore in game, this man is going to be crazy by his senior year. Another thing that the Wolverines utilized in real life was a two-headed monster at running back in terms of Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum. The ratings are pretty consistent with what they were used for in real life. As you can see, Haskins is much more of a power back. Only 83 speed, 74 strength though. 94 broken tackle, 87 trucking. He is going to run over some Broncos. Whereas Blake Corum is a burner. He's got 91 speed, already faster than anybody on our team. 95 agility, 95 acceleration, 89 awareness himself, and 89 elusiveness. Both of them with 89 plus ball carrier vision. They're going to give us some fits. At receiver, they got some really skilled athletes. I'm a little concerned about Roman Wilson here in particular with that 94 speed, 98 agility, and 98 acceleration. He might shred our secondary today. And then Cornelius Johnson checks in with the highest catch rating here. At least in game here, they do not have one dominant receiver, but they've got plenty of depth. In fact, any of their first five receivers would be the highest overall on our entire roster. So take that as you will. The Wolverines also have two 90 plus overall tight ends. So if they have any two tight end sets, we're also in trouble. Eric All here specifically has 82 speed and 93 acceleration out of the tight end position. He'll basically be functioning as another receiver in this game at least. And their 87 catching a piece is also terrifying. I don't think there's a linebacker on our team that can cover these guys, nor a corner or a safety for that matter. Their entire offensive line I just scoured through is 90 plus. There's some big boys up front. Look at this one in particular. Andrew Stuber, 97 strength. Looks like he'll be mauling us up front. The guys that technically play left end and right end aren't anything special. They're mid 80s. But the real problems on these defense are the edge rushers. And that is David Ajaba, who's a 92 overall with 91 away. Awareness, only a sophomore, a terrifying prospect. And then of course, Heisman finalist Aiden Hutchinson, who in this game is a 99 overall, a terror at the right outside linebacker position. He's going to be a mismatch no matter what he's doing on the field today. We simply do not have an athlete that can contain Aiden Hutchinson. And I will tell you that right now. With his 99 awareness, 89 agility, 89 acceleration, the man's got an 86 stiff arm and a 79 spin move. What can he not do? The real ratings we got to look out for here, though, are the 93 tackle, 90 hit power, 90 power move, 90 finesse move, 99 block shed, and a little bit of a lower pursuit. But we've got 99 play erect to go along with that decent man in zone coverage he is going to be a problem today anybody they have at inside backer is going to be a problem today too they've got 485 plus something that is music to my ears right now i'm discovering as i'm recording this is that vincent gray's only got an 83 speed as their number one cornerback and you know he's going to be matched up with sky Moore. so i think some deep shots are going to come in this game that's probably going to be one of the only ways we can generate offense against this terrifying michigan defense but across the board they still have some really good depth at corner but overall they have great depth here they have Daxton Hill at corner. I'm pretty sure he's their number one. Yeah, he's a number one free safety too, but 91 overall checking with 97 speed. He will be the biggest problem in that secondary. If he's back there, I'm not taking a deep shot with Sky Moore. I'll tell you that right now. And finally, rounding out their defense, we've got Brad Hawkins at the strong safety position. Man, this is going to be a tough team to beat. And then on special teams, we've got a 90 overall kicker, sheesh, and an 88 overall punter. That's also no joke. Their kicker turners, oh my goodness, they got all 99s across the board. This is going to be an uphill battle, folks, but I am so freaking ready. Let's jump straight into it, everybody. The fans are on their feet in Ann Arbor for the kickoff of the 2021 college football season. Here we go, Bronco fans across the country. The dynasty is now officially underway with that kickoff. Here we go, Broncos. Woo! And a big kickoff by Roman Wilson to start, but we finally get him down. And for the first time in the history of the dynasty, the Bronco defense is on the field. I'm using Ali Fayad right there. There's an option right off the bat. Hassan Haskins picks up a nice gain of about six yards, but Broncos stopping short of the first down. Empty gun here for Michigan. I'm using Ali Fayad once again off the edge. They got a motion right here. Ooh, and a tackle from behind the line. Oh, he gets trucked. Third time's a charm here. Use ring Ali Fayad. I'll probably switch it up after this. But here comes the option fake again. Quarterback keeper right there. Cade McNamara, only two yards. I'll take that. This might be a little dangerous here. A man across the board except for our two deep safeties. Looks like it's another option, though. Oh, and it's a pitch. Hassan Haskins has the edge. But a nice tackle there. I don't know who that was. 
I got to get familiar with this team myself. But a third and one coming up. And, ooh, and I completely whiff on the tackle. But Hassan Haskins goes down for a loss in the backfield. We've got a fourth and four coming up. And there we go, everybody. Marcus Perez Brennan, coaching his first game at Western Michigan University, is coming out trying to completely retool this offense. Let's see how this Bronco offense looks. So the first offensive snap in WMU Dynasty history goes for a loss of one. That's fine. As you can see, the crowd getting into it here. We got the squiggly lines on our routes. We're going to go for a play action here. Looking for Borsk. Usually this is a money play in this game. Let's see how it translates to this dynasty. Borsk is wide open. And look at Brett Borsk go. After a huge gain, the Broncos are moving. They've got a first and 10 coming up. I do not like that we're running right towards Aiden Hutchinson right now. But let's see what we can do. Nice pickup on the block there. Sean Tyler can't get the edge, and it's another loss of a yard for him. So that's two rushes for negative two yards so far. It's going to be tough to run on this team. Second 11 coming up. Here comes LLB and Tyler out the backfield. It's going to be another option. We're going straight to Hutchinson. Let's see what decision he makes here. Ooh, and Sean Tyler takes it up the middle. LLB opts to hand it off and gains five yards. We got a third and six coming up in Michigan territory. A big third down coming up here. I see Sky Moore one-on-one -on -one in that corner. If that is man coverage, spoiler alert, I'm going to him. Oh, what are we going to do otherwise? We got Corey Crooms on the left side. Let's just play this by ear. Tyler be coming out of the backfield as well. It is one-on-one. -on -one. Sky Moore is wide open. There's his first catch of the season and a first down for the Broncos. Don't look now, everybody, but we are moving the football. I uh, I might be speaking a little too soon because here comes another run. But, oh, Aiden Hutchinson just shuffled into the middle. So let's see if we can get this edge here. No Hutchinson. Nice little juke there by Sean Tyler. Couldn't get the outside, but you know what? We'll take that. Five yards. We're going to get our first look at Jefferson out of the backfield right here with a triple option. This look will only go to him if that inside guy commits to the quarterback. Let's see how this goes. Second and five. We're milking the clock right now, by the way, which is everything that we want to do. Oh, and Ellaby on the inside is going to slide for another first down. And the Broncos are really moving the football now. I don't think it's premature anymore to say that. Let me tell you right now, Caleb Ellaby feels so much faster in game than what his rating would suggest. I believe he's only a 79 speed or somewhere around there. Here comes another option. We got Ellaby and Jefferson out of the backfield. Hutchison on the left. Here we go. Ellaby's going to keep that all the way. And he's going to get inside for another first down and slides in again. We are at the Michigan 10-yard line with a chance to take the lead after not getting the ball first. It is not a first and goal yet as we're about an inch short of the 10-yard line. Here comes Tyler out of the backfield. We're just going to run this right at the middle. Keep setting that tone. And with that four-yard rush, we are completely content to go to the second quarter. A 0-0 zero to zero score right now which is a victory in my books by a long shot. 0-0 zero zero going into the second quarter was the best case scenario, honestly, with Michigan getting the football back. Um, I guess the only other one would have been we got a defensive score, but that didn't happen. And I'm fine with it because we've actually milked about four minutes of game clock already here. And here comes another option, LB and Tyler. Oop, this one's going to Tyler who gets blown up that time. We are not going to gain 5 to 10 yards on every single run that is unrealistic to expect. And here comes a huge third and 10 at the Michigan 10-yard line. And we're just going to continue to milk this clock. If we can walk away with three points here, that's a victory. Oh, and Tyler's open on the screen. And Sean Tyler is going to get in for the first touchdown for the WMU Broncos in this dynasty. And the Western Michigan Broncos are up 6-0 in Ann Arbor. Wow, talk about best case scenario. That was another one there. The Broncos have a 7 to nothing lead in their first game of the season over the Michigan Wolverines. Think about that for a second. You know, funnily enough here, Michigan's pace of play might work against them in this game. I know they like to ground it out and pound the football. Against this Broncos team that is trying to do the same thing, it could be an uphill battle. Now, I will say we need to bring down our expectations just a little bit because this is still a Big Ten football team. Ooh. Let's go. Hassan Haskins tackled for another loss right there. We got a second and 12 coming up. 
We got a QB spy on this one. I'm going to use her Holly Jr. up the middle. Trying to clog up the lane and I can't get there, but that doesn't matter because we tackle him way short of a first down. And here comes a third and eight. This could be a huge down in terms of repercussions for the rest of the game. Let's see what we can do here. We're drawing up a cover one. Ooh, empty gun. See what happens here. I don't know about all these man coverage across the board with these Michigan athletes. Oh, and there's somebody gets beat right there. A huge game for the Wolverines. There's a flag on the play, though. I'm not sure what this is going to be, but there's a flag on the play. Pass interference. Is that on the offense or on the defense? Oh, my goodness. Pass interference for the Michigan Wolverines. Are you kidding me? So that's why he was that open. But all of a sudden, we're talking about a third and 18 at their own 17. This is gigantic. Jim Harbaugh is not pleased with that call, but you know Marcus Perez Brennan is. This opens up our whole defensive play calling. You know what? I'm going to play a little conservative, though. Um, mm. Will I? Will I? Now let's bring a safety to blitz. We got another empty gun. Um, I'm going to use your Coleman right here. If they get something quick here, they could be in... We could get in some trouble. And oh, wide open down the middle is Baldwin. And that is all for naught as a 33-yard reception gives the Michigan Wolverines a first down. Uh, we got more man coverage. I'm already not liking this. Let's see what Corvin Moment can do here against Baldwin. I'm going to try to user him. Oh, and they're keeping that right there. All right, only a one-yard gain. We got another third down. Let's see what the Broncos can do here. Another huge third down. So far, the Wolverines are one for two here. We've got more man across the board with the QB spy as he continues to keep it. And, ooh, is that a first down? It is. Eight-yard reception there for the Wolverines. They're going to move the chains. Defensive coordinator Luis Pazito drawing up a mad blitz here. Let me get this corner in here as fast as possible. Can I get to McNamara? No. Oh, but it's picked off. We've got an interception. There looks to be a flag on the play, though. If that is roughing the passer, I'm going to be devastated. It is, and that is my fault. I guess the throw was completely off because of the quarterback hit. But you cannot have that in that situation. That is an interception. Would have been going the other way. Instead, it is a first down for the Wolverines and a huge blunder for these Broncos. First and 10 from the 25 for the Wolverines here. Fayad's not going to fall for that. Still a four-yard gain here for Hassan Haskins. All right, another second and six coming in from the 20. Ooh, and Hassan Haskins breaks a tackle and shoves off another one for an 11-yard gain. The Wolverines are in business. We're going for the NCAA blitz play here again. This is the blitz that brought pressure on the interception that got called back. Here's Lovely trying to reconcile for his mistake. A nice tackle there for only a five-yard gain for Hassan Haskins. The Wolverines just burned their first time out of the game. The Broncos aren't phased, though. There's still two minutes to go. We're still up seven points right now and getting the ball at half. Hassan Haskins up the middle is going to get stuffed. And we've got another third down coming up. This would be... A huge, huge swing of momentum if the Broncos are able to stop them. Or even just allow three points. We're getting aggressive here. We may live to regret it. Oh, and we are... Oh, nope, 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 nope. Can't do this. Calling a timeout. We are not in a good look. That would have been an easy touchdown. All right. Let's hope that that timeout helped settle us a little bit. This is a slightly better formation. I'd favor this one a little bit more. Still feel a little nervous about the receiver on the edge there. I don't know if he's going to get covered. And an incomplete pass for the Broncos. It is a fourth and three. Let's go, defense. Stepping it up today. It would have been amazing if that play had gotten intercepted. But you know what? We can't complain with a stop there. Three points is a victory. Let's go, Broncos. Let's go. One highlight of allowing a score from the Wolverines there is we get to see Sky Moore return his first kick. Let's see if he can make some magic happen here. He cuts inside. Ooh. Oh, oh he breaks a tackle. Oh, it breaks another one. He fumbled it out of bounds. A 17-yard return that was a bit of a roller coaster ride. In my defense, typically that little stutter step gets you a wide open lane if you have good enough acceleration. Didn't work that particular instance, but that's all right. Let's get a taste of this Broncos offense once more as Caleb Ellaby brings his men back onto the field. Looks like we've got one-on-one -on -one with Sky Moore here again. And of course, I'd love the deep shot, but if this stays in man, I'm just going to take this easy first down. Um... Otherwise, I'll look for Tyler out of the backfield. 
That is another man coverage right there. And Sky Moore once again wide open and a first down. I almost want to go hurry up here, but I think I'm just going to pick out a nice play and then see what we can do from there. All right, so a couple seconds come off the clock. We've got a triple option look that usually is money for me in this game. Let's see if we can do it with this Bronco squad. We're going right to Hutchinson again. And, oh, he opts to go for the quarterback. And there's Jefferson with his first handoff as he cuts back in the middle, trying to get a first down to no avail there. But another timeout burned for the Broncos. So we've got a second and one. I have no shame in audibling out of this play if it doesn't look like it's going to work. You know, this is about 50-50, I think, with this jet sweep to Sky Moore because Hutchinson's on the left side. But I'm going to try my luck, and we'll get aggressive for third down if we need to. Sky Moore has the space there, and it's a first down. That is all we needed. That is perfectly fine by me. A simple five-yard gain will go a long way sometimes. Still haven't called a timeout, but we've got a minute to work with. And, of course, this is college football, so the clock stops on every first down so they can reset the sticks. Let's see what the Broncos can do here as Nunley is wide open right there. Did he get that first down? Yes. And he gets out of bounds, so he stops the clock. The Broncos can seriously get some points here. I think I'm going to scramble out to the right, see if Nunley will be open on this. I mean, best case scenario, Moore is open for the touchdown. Oh, and that's a terrible play. Ooh, that was a mind-numbingly stupid decision. But we are just lucky that that wasn't intercepted. I know it might sound crazy continuously running these run games in this clock situation. But let's see what we can do here with Sky Moore. Nothing. What do we do here? I think I'm going to try to get some yards here. We're going aggressive, everybody. We're trying to pull off this upset. We're not going to do it by not taking risks. Let's see if we can get this first down. A huge potential play. We've got Corey Crooms wide open for the first down on the fourth down conversion. Now we're going to get them to run up to the line so we can spike the ball and get another playoff. LB running up to the line, spike that ball. Only a second of clock comes off. That is beautiful. What a gutsy decision there. And the first incomplete pass for Caleb Ellaby is not a conventional one. But we've got some options now. If we take a sack here at any point, it's an instant timeout. And we're just bringing out the field goal unit. Not that that is a shoe-in field goal with our kicking situation. But I'm looking for Sky Moore here for at least a first down. And he's wide open. Can he get that in? Yes! And he gets out of bounds. It looks like we're going to get one shot at the end zone, and then we're bringing out that field goal unit because we want to go up seven at least going into halftime. This Wolverine crowd is absolutely stunned. And can you imagine if this is how the real 2021 season had started? Mission getting punched in the mouth in their own house? I can only imagine the Harbaugh rumors that would have swirled at that point. But let's see if we can get a touchdown here with one final shot at the end zone. If it's not there, I'm going to try to throw it away so we can get some points here. Look for Tyler there, nothing. We're just going to have to call that timeout and bring out the field goal unit. Let's see if we can get three points before half and go up seven. If you're not familiar with the kicking mechanics in NCAA, they can get weird. And they get extra weird sometimes with uh, the college football revamped mod. Um, but let's see if we can bring this bad boy in. And it is up and good. And just like that, the Western Michigan Broncos are going into halftime in Ann Arbor. Up 10-3. to three. Now, folks, this is on all Heisman difficulty. I swear to you. I can even pull up my settings right now if, if nobody believes me. Because, honestly, I don't really believe myself. I need to double check to make sure that I'm even on the right settings. I'm not going to cut this. I'm speaking. These are my settings. Why am I going to strategy? It should be in house rules, which is in settings, I believe. I'm still talking. This is all uncut. House rules. Show me those statistics. Heisman, Heisman, Heisman. Game rules. Come on, come on. The only one that's different that I had already shown you on the intro is the uh, clipping right there, 45. Custom AI, user, all 50s, all 50s. CPU, all 50s except for QB accuracy, wide receiver catching, and interceptions. All settings that I showed at the beginning of the season. This is just the Bronco team showing up with an upset on their minds, folks. If this is any indication of what this team can be down the road, I am ridiculously excited for the future. 
as we're getting the ball back with a chance to build on a 7 point lead over a team with a 14 overall rating boost. The last thing we want to do here is turn the ball over right away and steal the momentum away from us. So we're going to look one more time. I know this is kind of cheese, but I'm looking for a Sky Moore on the curl here if this is man coverage. If it is not, we'll get creative. Ooh, it is not. We got Nunley who does not hang on to the football across the middle. So we've got a second and ten coming up. Caleb Ellaby looking pretty good so far. It's going to be an inside handoff to Jefferson who's going to blow somebody over and extend close to the first down. Still going to be a gain of nine yards and a third and one for the Broncos. Let's see if we can convert this. We need one yard here. We're going to go for the good old-fashioned QB sneak. We've got Caliendo in the middle, so he should make some kind of an impact. Let's see if Ellaby can pick this up. And Ellaby plows forward for a first down, a three-yard rush when we only needed one. The Broncos are playing like a team with a chip on their shoulder. Maybe some of these guys were U of M fans growing up and never got that scholarship offer. I don't know, but they're playing with their hairs on fire. Here comes the option keeper again. Nope, it's going to be a handoff right to Sean Tyler, who's going to get a first down, it looks like it. Yep, a 10-yard rush right there. That's 10-plus first downs now for the Broncos. This Bronco running attack is looking like a three-headed monster with Jefferson, Tyler, and Ellaby. Let's see what they can pick up here. Hutchinson goes inside. Ellaby with another keeper. Oh, I'm scared of him fumbling the football. He still gets two yards, though. We'll take that. Haven't had a straight-up run in a while. Let's see if we can take Tyler on the outside and get an edge. Here's the handoff. He's got a little bit of space. Gets the outside. Look at that juke move. And spins out of bounds. We got a third and two coming up. My instinct here was to go for a halfback toss. But I don't know if I like that look right now, especially with Hutchison on the left side. So I'm going for the triple option. It's been working so far. Let's make Hutchinson make a decision and see what we can get from there. Hutchinson makes a good decision. We get stuffed there. The first fourth down that I don't think we're even thinking about. We're punting this football. We are not going to give them a short field. This Broncos defense has come to play so far, and let's see if they can do it again. For those punt enthusiasts out there, here's the first punt of the series. Let's see how this goes. Cannot say by any means that I'm an expert punter, but that isn't bad. Please bounce out of bounds. Oh! Cade McNamara and the Wolverines come back out, down seven from their own 20-yard line. Let's see what the Broncos can do here. There's a motion into the backfield. An interesting little option designed there. Take him out from under the legs, though. Short of the first down. It'll be a nine-yard gain. Second and one coming up. Lou Esposito's going to send some heat here for the Broncos. We got Coleman coming off. Ooh, I don't know if he's going to be able to make that tackle. Oh, nope. It's a first down. Made the tackle. Got just enough to get the first down and move the chains for the Wolverines. First down, Michigan. We've got an empty backfield here, but we're going to keep up the aggressiveness. We've got the safety coming in. I'm going to blitz with Coleman here again, and it is a QB keeper for McNamara, who's only going to get one yard out of this. Second and nine coming up for the Wolverines. Still down seven. McNamara calling out some looks. Fayad off the side, can't get the push. And it's a first down for the Wolverines. Hassan Haskins is just throwing around our defensive players like test dummies right now. A little stat just came up on the screen. That was only the Wolverines' fourth pass attempt of this entire game so far. We're a minute away from the fourth quarter. As Fayad gets in the inside, gets some pressure, but cannot get to the quarterback in time. It's a 10-yard game for the Wolverines. A second and inches coming up. Second and inches here. We're bringing A.J. Thomas up here on a blitz again. Let's see if he can get in the backfield in time. I don't think he's going to get the angle. Another first down and... They tried to give Hassan Hassings another stiff arm animation there. It didn't work out that time, but still a first down for the Wolverines. We're not in the Big Ten yet, but this is a Big Ten football game if I've ever seen one. It's about to be the fourth quarter. We've got 13 total points and one touchdown. As Fayad makes a fantastic play there. Limit him to a two-yard gain. We'll take that any day of the week. Second and eight coming up. Aaron Carter can't get the sack. But we do bring down McNamara, and that actually doesn't go as a sack. My bad, because it was an option play. But we bring him down for a loss of two, and it's a third and ten coming up. The Broncos have got something on this defense. Let's see here if the Wolverines play it out or if they do it on this play right here. Is this going to be the final play of the third quarter? It is. Here comes McNamara. Ooh, 
McNamara, I don't know how to say his damn name, and a huge gain there for the Wolverines, a 32-yard reception. That is an absolute backbreaker for this defense. But we're going into the fourth quarter up by seven. If you had told me that before this game, I would say that it was a success with flying colors. Let's see if the Broncos can set this tone in the fourth quarter and come away with an absolute shocker in the big house to kick off the 2021 season. One quarter left in this football game, one quarter away from the Broncos potentially pulling off an absolute stunner, but we're going to need to stop this Wolverine offense first. Let's see what we can do about that. Ooh, there was a potential for an interception there, but nothing out of it. As the Wolverines get their first touch of the game, McNamara finds a receiver in the back of the end zone. Ooh, that is brutal. And we're an extra point away from a tie football game here. And the extra point is up and good. So it is 10 to 10 in this football game before Caleb Ellaby and the WMU Broncos get a chance to respond. Well, it took until the fourth quarter, Michigan fans, but you finally got your touchdown. I don't think the fans in the big house are too thrilled that it took this long, but you scored nonetheless. Time for this kickoff. We got Sky Moore back to return. Let's see what he can do with this. Oh, and Sky Moore's got a crease. Can he get that edge right there? And he does. A big return for Sky Moore as he steps out of bounds. But a 39-yard return is exactly what the Broncos ordered right there. Here is a massive possession for the WMU Broncos. They've got to show that these first three quarters were not a fluke. And that all starts with Caleb Ellaby. We've been pounding the ball a lot, so let's see if we can get some good action on this play action right here. Oh, it looks like Sky Moore had an opening. And I don't know why, his, why the tight end pull up there, the, the X receiver there. But Jack Sherwin was open, got a little five-yard gain out of it. We'll take it. Well, at least we're moving forward, and that makes second down a lot more manageable. Second and five for the Broncos here. And now we're not playing with the lead, so the game plan changes a little bit. We'll have back-to-back -back passes for what I'm assuming is the first time in a while. It's going to be another play-action look here, though. As we got Sherwin again wide open, brushes off a tackle and gets out of bounds for the first down. Look at Jack Sherwin, the fullback, with that catch right there. Here come the Broncos on a second and eight, a huge down as well. I don't want to get into a long third down situation here. Let's see if Sky Moore is open downfield. If not, we're going to Borsk all the way here. Borsk was not open. Sherwin was. It's a third and two, and that's three catches for Jack Sherwin on this possession. Another massive third down for the WMU Broncos here. We're three for five so far, as that little graphic just showed. We're going right up the middle with Tyler. I don't trust the leg of the kicker or the punter for that matter from this distance. So we don't even want to put ourselves in the situation of a fourth down. Let's pick up this first down right here. Tyler up the middle. Some great blocking from the Broncos. And it is fourth quarter football time. So we need to make sure that we're making the proper adjustments. For big runs, we're now going into conservative mode. We do not want to fumble the football. Who cares if we break off a long run at this point? We're already inside the 30. In terms of tempo, we are also going conservative. We want the next possession the Michigan Wolverines have to be the last possession of the football game, and hopefully one that we can clinch a victory in. First and 10 coming up. We've now got Chu Clock on. A pitch to Tyler. He's got the edge. Ooh, cannot get around there yet. He does not have that breakaway speed, as is clearly evident so far in this game. Nothing on that first down run. In a second and 10, the only thing we gain out of that is Michigan losing time. Second and 10 coming up. Still trying to milk this clock. We've got an option right here. LLB is going to be the keeper. Oh, and he's got space right there. Oh, he's got plenty of space. A 16-yard rush right there. If he'd broken that last tackle, he might have been dancing in the end zone right now. As we continue to wind down this clock, now, with only 2 minutes and 22 seconds left, we're going to try to get this halfback screen going to Tyler. Ooh, Hutchinson was almost at LLB right there. And Tyler makes an amazing move inside the 5-yard line. We've got a first and goal now for the Broncos as time continues to tick off. First and goal here for the Broncos. A touchdown is massive at this point. Let's see what we can do here. I know the Wolverines want to stop us, but they can't. Tyler just plowing forward the offensive line there had a huge effort and we're down to about the one yard line 
with only about a minute 30 to go. So when this ball is snapped, we're going to be at about a minute and five seconds left in the entire game, which is music to my ears right now, as we're only a yard away from taking a six-point lead. Let's see what Tyler can do up here. Does he have the space? And no, he is stopped by the Wolverines. And that brings up a huge third and goal. It'll be interesting to see what the Wolverines plan to do here with their timeouts as well. There is one play that has been money time and time again today. It is the option. And we're going to go for it here on third and goal. And Tyler's going to get it up the middle. And that's a touchdown for the Broncos who take a six-point lead with 22 seconds left in the big house. Three timeouts for Michigan, though. They're going to get one last gasp, but this is massive. This extra point will put the Broncos up seven if it is good, and it is up and through the uprights. The Wolverines are down seven in their own house to kick off the 2021 season. This is going better than I could have possibly imagined to kick off the series. We are 22 seconds away from a victory. Advanced analytics here might say to just squib this, but I'm actually going to kick it deep and hope they return it to just wind off six free seconds off the clock, at least. Let's see if that works. Mahalik kicks it deep. Oh, and a little bit too deep. The Wolverines are not going to return this one, so they will have 22 seconds and 75 yards to go and try to tie this football game. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now officially crunch time. Every single snap matters. 22 seconds left. The Wolverines have to go 75 yards. Ali Fayyad can't get there, but you know what? Carter does, and that is a sack for the Broncos. A huge one, which will bring up a second and 17 for the Wolverines. Second and 17 coming up here for the Wolverines. Fayyad trying to get in there. He cannot. Ooh, Cade McNamara throws a dangerous pass that falls incomplete. That brings up a third and 17 with 13 seconds left. It's big boy football time here. Third and 17 for the Wolverines with the game on the line. McNamara's going deep, and it's intercepted. The Broncos are going to walk out of here with a massive upset. Are you kidding me? Cade McNamara, in only his ninth pass attempt of the game, throws his worst pass of the day, intercepted in traffic, and the Broncos are going to walk out of here with a victory. Wow, I mean, you'd think it was scripted. I don't know how else to prove that it wasn't, but Caleb Elby is going to take a knee now, a couple knees, and wind out the clock for an absolutely massive upset in Marcus Perez Brennan's first game in his new tenure as Western Michigan head coach. The Wolverines burn their last time out, and here on this third and 15, the best third and 15 I have ever faced. Caleb LB is going to take one final knee and wind out the clock in a statement win for Marcus Perez Brennan and the West Michigan Wolverines. And that is all she wrote, folks. The Western Michigan Broncos pick up their first win of the season in an absolute shocker in the big house. An ESPN Classic game indeed. Wow. Wow. What a game. What an effort. Sean Tyler gets a player of the game. He scored both touchdowns for the Broncos. Talk about a statement win. Are you kidding me? I'm still kind of in shock. 17 points for the Broncos was not surprising to me. 10 for the Wolverines is unfathomable. It was unfathomable. And I think that was probably a nationally televised game. It was a U of M home game. So that can only do wonders for our university profile and for recruiting Wow, Sean Tyler, well deserves a player of the game for that one in an absolute stunner. What else can you say that hasn't been said already? The Broncos pull off a massive, massive upset. What a game and what a victory for the Broncos. And look at these statistics. 14 to 8 edge in first downs. We doubled Michigan's rushing total and outpassed them. Zero turnovers to Michigan's one, a costly one at that. And we almost doubled their time of possession as well. That is domination wire to wire. This Bronco team, again, played with their hair on fire. 
and with a chip on their shoulder, and it showed. Sean Tyler, easily the offensive player of the game right there. 15 carries and 42 yards is nothing to call home about, but he had both touchdowns on offense for the Broncos. Bryson Garner with the interception of his life there in the big house. Only had two tackles for the rest of the game, but that pick came at the perfect time. It's not how many, but when. As Houston loses to FCS Southeast. Yikes. And just like that, week one is in the books. I will be on the recruiting trail myself in a little bit. But the WMU Broncos achieve an extremely impressive victory over a team that ended up making the college football playoff in the real life 2021 season. An absolute stunner. And like I said earlier, a statement win for this program and for Marcus Perez Brennan in his first game coaching. You think this Western team has a different identity? Show me a Bronco team that has beaten Michigan in the big house. Thank you so much for everybody watching this video. I really appreciate you giving me the support you have already so far on this channel. These gameplay videos I'll be cranking out a lot faster than the offseason slash preseason ones. Let me know if there's anything I can improve on. I'm still new to this recording gameplay thing on NCAA. But for now, please leave a like and please subscribe for college football revamped content and more WMU Football Dynasty. What a way to start this series off. But I hope you all join me for next week as we host San Jose State for the WMU football home opener. I guarantee after this huge victory, there will be a rocking crowd in Waldo Stadium. I'll see you all next week. Much love to you all. Deuces. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, this is kind of groovy though. Hey, hey. It was a dark and stormy night, but a bright and shiny day. The world is upside down and I'm feeling okay. Hey.